What's up, my little poop champs? I finally emerged from my comatose state of taking consecutive 10 hour naps. Very demure, very mindful. Mm, very good. That being said, today we will be taking DBD advice from artificial intelligence. No. I asked ChatGBT to make me a survivor build, and this is what it coughed up. <laughs> it seems to be fond of a certain set of perks that it always loves to choose, so I refreshed the prompt a few times to check what else we could get, but there didn't seem to be that much variation. <laughs> For a balanced survivor build, I'm supposed to run self care, bore time, dead hard, and prove thyself. <sighs> We also got additional tips on how to use these perks effectively, but I did not think any of the recorded footage was fun to watch, so I made my prompt even clearer. Make it silly. And I'm not going to lie, it did spit out silly and a bit interesting. Instead of self-care, bar time, that hard, and prove thyself, we will use deception, diversion, head on, and quick and quiet. I was supposed to bring a firecracker too, and honestly I did not fancy hemorrhaging my dear firecracker supply, so let's not! We ignore the Shroud of Binding offering to... I'm not greedy, you are. Well, you heard what I'm supposed to do, let's jump right into it. Demonia's ready and packed, we get very demurely sent to Grave of nah, Glenville. Very considerate entity, or whoever brought this fuck-ass offering. Starting with my second favorite task, besides holding M1, we render ourselves useless by getting the anti-sting spray. Nobody tell her that this is also holding M1. While scrambling my brain cells after already getting my ears blown out by Wesker's mighty terror radius, we at least get progress on our rock. Struggling a bit with the behemoth of Terra and Radius to pinpoint where he actually is, we commence dilly-dallying around to not get our ass eaten. Interrupting my number one task to check if the generator I'm doing is going to free gen us, we establish that I probably shouldn't continue doing it since we only have these two on this side that close to each other. I do it anyways. <laughs> Sadly, having my mischievous plan interrupted by an aggravating little noise that was forced off my gen. Slithering around the small part of this godforsaken LT, we get to use deception in an effort of throwing West Cussie off. After bonding with the wall, he makes sure to check the locker. Some may call this being deceived. Hoping for him to leave the perimeter, Goopsa did not let me off the hook that easily. Trying my luck to get to another tile, I constantly have to watch out to not run into random objects. Getting to whatever these pieces of woods are, it's time to vault the window using quick and quiet, probably confusing him and getting the heck out of here. I can't believe I just said heck. The breakable wall being Wesker's biggest op, we throw a rock at him, inducing a mild concussion that he surprisingly recovered quickly from. Back in chase, we loop the safe pallet onto the side to fake the window and slow spin into a hook like a dumbass. <laughs> Suffering the consequences, it's time to figure out how to not loop this funky pile of tile. Not expecting him to use bound here, we left flabbergasted to the point that I knew there was no way I can silly myself out of this one, so I tried to waste as much time as possible, ending in me giving him a smooch. Washing machine. After being freed and patched up, I make my way to the generator that is not going to free Genos for a change. Failing a skill check, I got reminded that I haven't gotten rid of my plaything yet, so I started wandering around to find it. Too bad I got distracted by the generator I did not want to do in the first place, so I set my priorities straight trying to finish it. If only a certain someone didn't bring the killer to this area. Being super sneaky and crouched behind the generator, I am about to witness the fattest and most devious sandbag in UE history. Staring a bit too long, Long trying to comprehend what just happened, Wesker's attempt at removing me from the crime scene ended in him swinging at the window. Leaving this area, I finally got to searching and getting rid of my plaything. Conveniently running into Yui that seems to be in need of help, I was ready to take a hit for her at any time. Deception coming in clutch making Wesker check the locker again helped Yui to get away and me to take aggro. Anticipating him using bound again, I fake the window trying to dodge it. What I was not expecting is that he cancels it, resulting in me taking a smack to the face here. Slow vaulting the window meanwhile he was on cooldown was planned not to waste quick and quiet for our upcoming impish play. I did in fact put all my hopes in him vaulting and passing by so I could get head on in time. Waiting in the locker like a forgotten bag of garbage, I came in clutch to save Megan that was dead on hook. Yes, I will take all the credit here, this had never anything to do with him losing her here at all. Back to vaulting the same window one more time, we rustle and bustle up the stairs. Kind of underestimating how fast Gooby really was, we consequently get down. Seeing Yui and Lara run to take hits caught me by surprise, but not as much as the bug of not being able to continue to wiggle. Tragically, their hits were wasted and I would have probably been able to wiggle off if it wasn't for this. 
Subsequently to mending Yui's and my broken heart, time has come to de-stink myself to make sure that I can fulfill my duties as useless survivor main. That being said, I throw a random pebble at the sky, finishing the generator that will most definitely free gen us. It did not. Did I get you? Failing to hide in plain sight results in us being chased again. Not learning from the past that this killer does not fall for any of my shenanigans, we get hit after attempting to make him respect the pallet. Passing by a locker, we get a chance to use deception again. Sadly, he didn't fall for it this time. Almost getting stuck in this hellish corner of a tile, we manage to dodge bound and live another second. Rapidly clapping our cheeks to get together gave us enough distance to make it to a tile that does somewhat know how to run giving him the classic stinky winky lt treatment Hello. we see miss croft trying to take a hit and aggro for us Meaning we get to see another two minutes of life. Noticing that Yui is about to finish the last generator, I move my remains to the nearest exit gates in hopes of being able to 99 it. Hoped a little too much since we have silly West Cussie back up our crevice. Not cool, Stinky. My last ditch effort to survive was using the deception head-on combo, making him check the other locker yet again it was time to give him another smooch. Not having enough distance to make it anywhere, I knew I was over and done for. Looping this way was the smartest thing to do ever. A failed shot at a window fake into a getting stuck spin was wasting just enough time for my team to open the other exit and be safe. My thoughts after having had a fair share of self-care games before using this build are how the fuck do people still run self-care just like that? No medkit, no other perks, nothing. They just raw dog it. It genuinely amazes me. And it scares me. If you're one of those people, let me know how your DVD games go. Do you heal 80% of the time? Anyhow, back to the actual build we used in this video. I think we did succumb to the silliness fully and kind of had a fun time doing so. Sometimes. If you want me to suffer and use a whole build with the perks I dislike the most, let me know or don't. Up to you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Stay hydrated. Yeah. Stay slay. Have a good day. Don't be a jester, so we try to confine, we need to quote a half time.